Hi, hello, how are you? Amanda, Saint Artist. We're gonna talk about Saint Makeup Cream-Based 3D Foundation, but today I'm really specifically gonna talk about how to apply a corrector, but really focusing on how to apply your makeup over top of a correcting color. First things first, I'm gonna use my Milk Hydro Grip. I like this stuff and I always apply it to my cheeks first because I really want my makeup to stay, especially on my cheeks. That is my problematic area. I have scarring, I have hyperpigmentation, and it's all in what I would call a high traffic area. And that is where my contour is, my main highlight, blush, bronzer. So a lot of different tones go on here and that's what I want to talk about. <laughs> All right, so I typically use Aspen Contour and Suede Lip Liner. I have been playing with the new shades, and this is Hazel right here. Hazel has taken the place of those two colors, and I'm going to show you how I apply it, but really focusing on how to apply your makeup over top of something like that. So with my discoloration, I have redness here that I would correct with Aspen. I'd camouflage my hyperpigmentation with suede, but I'm gonna use hazel as one, but I'm gonna bring, cause my problematic area is really in this area. So we're gonna take that hazel highlight color and I am going to press this like a mask. Now I've done this with bronzer. And when I was thinking about that, I was like, you know what? What if I did my corrector this way? So I'm just taking this color, it's too dark for me. Let's be clear, that is not my skin tone and that's why I like it so much as a corrector. So I'm placing it over my stuff, over my hyperpigmentation spots, just like that. And it looks bad. That's okay, this is a corrector. I'm gonna take the blush and bronzer brush. So if you're just starting out with Saint, I always recommend getting the blush and bronzer brush in a collection because who doesn't like bronzer? And when you get it as a collection, it saves you $11. So get this brush. It's, it's good on the wallet, especially when you're just starting out. But then my secondary brush that I always use is the detail brush. So these are the two I'm gonna to use today, all right? So next I'm gonna take the small end of the blush and bronzer brush and I'm gonna tap this out. I'm blending these all together. It's gonna to stay where it is but it's gonna correct those areas. I have it over that hyperpigmentation back here, getting it over my, my melasma right here. I have a little spot right above my brow. So we're just gonna put that right there and I'm just gonna bring this around. Now I know there's a lot of people that I've color matched and they have hyperpigmentation that is low on their face and kind of recedes to their skin tone right in my high traffic area. So this is a great method for you if this is what you have. You don't necessarily need to bring it all the way up. If you don't have hyperpigmentation up here, don't do it. Just put it where that problem is. And if you have darkness on the lower part of your face that fades up to your skin tone, bridge your skin tone to your hyperpigmentation with this color or with whatever camouflaging color you're using. And so I'm tapping this out. Whatever's left on the brush, I'm gonna hit right here on my nose where I have redness. And then I'm gonna just tap in, tapping in. You don't wanna see it on your bristles. And I'm just gonna bring this, I have a little pimple right here, and I'm just gonna put a light layer over that pimple right there. That's it, okay? So when we're doing our makeup, I'm really specific on the colors I'm using to camouflage. So when I color match you, if I think suede might be a better option, that's what I'm gonna tell you. If I think Aspen would be a better option, so I'm gonna tell you, if I think hazel is gonna be a better option, I'm gonna tell you that. But also with hyperpigmentation, freckles even, this is a great way of camouflaging freckles as well. But using a contour color that doesn't have those dark red undertones is good. Don't use those, it's gonna grab them and pull them through. I'm using cedar, olive works really well. I would say stone, It's a very, stone is a warmer contour, so it really just depends. But I do take into account your stuff when I'm picking out your stuff. So think about it that way. All right, I am going to do my main highlight next. Now I'm using Athens. So you can see this is a little dark, a little bit lighter. This is my main highlight, truest tone to my skin, and then my brightening highlight, which is a little too light. I keep them all together. That way you can see which one's dark, which one's medium, which one's light. And I also have my contour here. This is the new Cedar. I really love this one for helping to continue to camouflage my hyperpigmentation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my main highlight because it is gonna be coming up a little high to help cover things and get into that high traffic area. So I'm gonna tap in to Athens and I'm just tapping this in, building it up. You can see it, but my bristles aren't clumping. And that's key. And when you're applying a highlight over 
a corrector. So I'm gonna I'm gonna balance this part of my skin out. I only put my main highlight on this lower part of my face. And I'm just gonna tap this. You don't wanna wipe. Once you've put a corrector on, you really wanna get into the habit of tapping your main highlight in. Do you see how it just balances and erases? When you have a good highlight color that really matches your tone the way Athens works for me, it looks like it's erasing the imperfections rather than covering them. And that is what I think Athens does for me. But it a little goes a long way. This is 80% pigmentation, so you don't need a lot to get really nice light coverage. I would say I'm a good medium coverage girl. I don't like my stuff showing through, but look at the difference from side to side of the way this goes to this. It looks so nice, and I haven't had to reload my brush. I'm just moving my product around, but it does come up into that high traffic area, and it's over that corrector. So keep in, that's why I do the stippling, that's why I do this first before contouring. All right, we're gonna go in again, we're gonna grab some of that Athens again, and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm just placing this on the lower part of my face, bringing it to my chin, around my mouth, to my nose, and up onto my apples. I have that scarring that I covered, and I want really good coverage over my scarring. So I do bring mine up a little bit higher. If you don't have scarring, don't do that. This is all about knowing your placement on your face. All right, we're gonna just bring this down right here, really taking what's left on my brush. I tend to over apply right here. When you first start out, this is not your liquid foundation. This is not your concealer. This is different. So there is a bit of a learning curve. I look like a wedding cake the first week I was using this makeup, but play with it. You have 30 days to play with it, do it. If you've only given it two or three days and you're like, it's awful, I don't like it. You really haven't given it a fair shot. Sorry, I'm sure that that's gonna ruffle some feathers and burn a little biscuits, but you really haven't. And so, I mean, think about it. Who liked broccoli the first time they tried it? I know I didn't. Who liked, oh. I know I don't like lima beans but I used to not like garbanzo beans and now I do. I put them in my salads all the time. So don't discount things the first couple times. It takes a while, okay? And this is makeup, it's fun. If you don't like it, wash it off, start over. Okay, get off my soapbox there. All right, makeup should be fun. That's really all it is in a nutshell for me. All right, I am gonna go in to my brightening highlight. I like using the small end of my detail brush if I'm only using these two brushes. So I'm gonna go in, I am using the color Palace. It is new. People compare it to Versailles. It is like Versailles, but darker. You can't expect two Versailles. So a lot of people are like, gosh, that's dark. I'm like, it is, it's like Versailles. I love Versailles, I'm just a little too dark for it now. So I'm gonna tap in with the small end. You could see that it's a little bit on the brush, but it's not clumping together. If your makeup is clumping your bristles together, you're putting on too much. And I'm just gonna hit this right here on my Cupid's bow, and it's just gonna brighten it, lighten it up, make the area look pretty and then I'm gonna go right here on my chin. This is where light reflects off my face. You can see it here, you can see it here reflecting off my face. Brightening is doing that. It's basically matching the reflecting light off your face. Okay, so we're tap and tappy tap, and then we're gonna go right here into the middle of the forehead. This is gonna cover my redness. This is gonna cover any breakouts that I might have. I didn't need to add a main highlight to this area. So I'm tapping this over, and it just makes this really pretty, dewy brightness to my face. I'm gonna add a little more, and I'm gonna bring this a little higher up, right here, just tappy, tappy, tap, and I'm using a really, really light touch. All right, I can hear my kids getting all out of hand. Taking the big end, I know I need to clean it, and I'm gonna go into cedar. We're going into contour right now. I'm gonna do my eyes last. All right, we're going into cedar. Tap into that thing like it hurt your feelings, okay? And put it on. It's not super clumpy together, and we're gonna put this where natural shadow is, which is right around here on your forehead, up along the hairline. We're gonna go down the sides of the nose. We're gonna hit the cheek, that high traffic area. I'm gonna do my forehead and nose just to get them out of the way. <laughs> so I'm gonna tap right here on this side. Tappy, tappy, tap. Tappy, tappy, tap, okay? We're gonna take what's left and I'm gonna go right here on the side of my nose. A little goes a long way. So just because you have it on the brush doesn't mean that's how much you have to put on your forehead. If you put too much on, spread the love. It's gonna be fine. I tap this on either side of my nose. I have a bump. And so tapping works for me. If you have a bit of a bump on your nose, tap it into place. I bridge mine together right here. 
And then I just rub it onto the tip just to square it off because that's what I like on my nose. And so I'm bringing this in. I'm going to use this little corner to just pull it up to my brow. Pull it up to my brow. And I'm going to leave it. I'm going to switch to the little end. I'm going to pinch it. I'm going to go into my palace color and I'm going to draw a straight line down my nose. Straight-ish. As straight as I can get it. I mean, who can draw a perfect circle or a perfect straight line freehand? Not me. And then I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to tap this up and then I'm going to tap this down and look at how nice that nose looks. It's a good looking nose. Whatever's left right here, I'm going to put this on my jawline. Spread the love if you put too much on your brush. It doesn't have to go in one place to be blended down. There are so many good places. If you've really overdone your brush with contour, this is a great place to empty it out. And I go in front of the earlobe just to square off the back, give it a little chisel. And then I bring it down and then pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. Okay, now we're gonna go back up to this forehead where these two weird dots are, and we are going to tappy, tappy, tap, and we're gonna bring it over the top middle and come to this one right here. And then we just tap it around. When you are correcting and you have a base correcting color that we've put on, tapping is your friend. Tapping keeps that corrector where it is, and it just helps things blend out so nice. I'm gonna take the fluffy end of my blush and bronzer brush, and I'm gonna sweep. I'm gonna sweep that brightness into my contour. My hair's getting all kinds of out, it's dirty, and it just never does. I am not one of those girls that like, dirty hair, don't care. I Dirty hair, I care. And I wish I could wash my hair every day, <laughs> but I'm not. All right, so taking that fluffy brush and I'm just pulling it out and I'm just merging it together. This is why I didn't need to take that Athens color and put it on my forehead. I put that corrector on, but when that brightening highlight hits that contour together, it balances out. So you don't need more product. Plus more makes texture. That's any makeup, okay? That's any makeup out there. More makeup makes more texture. Plain and simple. Okay, we're gonna take the big end of the detail brush. We're gonna go into cedar. Tappy, tappy, tap. I'm tapping on the edge here. Now, our cheeks have a natural shadow. They should. And that. And so I start with hanging towards the back. Now, this is in that high traffic area where all of my discoloration is. When you have a shadow, come just above it. Otherwise, you're going to pull all this down. Now, I'm 42. And so the last thing I want to do is help with the falling. Like, things are falling on my face. I'm wanting to kick them up. So I'm going to go take this natural shadow here. I'll put my finger, I'll lay it close to it. I'm going to go over it, over top, right there. Okay. And I'm going to press into that bottom part of that cheekbone. You don't want to come in more than your outer corner of your eye. Let your shadow do the rest. Your shadows are a guide. They're not a template. So you're just accentuating a shadow. So you don't need to follow the full shadow. If I did, I'd pull it down and down. And I don't, I'm gonna let my shadows do their own thing, but I'm gonna help back here with my cheek. Under blend, under blend this, my kids, they sound so loud, but I'm not gonna yell on here. I'm not, I'm not. Okay, <laughs> over here, this is where I have my really dark hyperpigmentation spot. I'm coming above that natural shadow, hanging it towards the back, and again, not coming in past that outer corner of my eye. And I'm just tapping that in. If you need more, tap it in like it hurt your feelings. And then just tap. Tapping is key, especially this high traffic area where you have that corrector and you've got all that stuff. You want to tap. And this is where you want to start being a little more careful. Under blend, because we're going to be adding some bronzer. If you want to add bronzer, I mean, we got the bundle. Might as well use the bronzer. So we're going to go light. From here out, we go light because we've already got our corrector, our main highlight, and our contour on. So there's a, there's stuff going on here. And again, more makes texture, but we still want to cover it. So we're trying to be purposeful. I'm going to take the fluffy end of my brush. I'm going to go into my bronzer here. This is Bella bronzer. This is my ride or die. If you're ever unsure of which bronzer to get, you won't lose with Bella. You won't. It was a standalone color for five years the only show in town, and everybody liked it. Every skin tone loved Bella. You can't go wrong with Bella, so don't don't fret. Okay, we're going in, fluffy in. I'm, I pinch mine just to do it, I don't know, and then I shake it to re-fluff it out. Okay, so it's on the brush, and I'm gonna go up here first, because again, more makes texture. So I'm tapping it on on the outer sides, and this is just, I'm gonna drape it. 
I really like having my main blush be my bronzer. That's how I like it. So I'm kind of using this as a blush. So I put some more on and I'm going to smile and I'm going to place this right here. Right there. And it's just working as my blush. And I'm smiling because I want to see where my apples are because at 42, they just aren't where they were 10 years ago. Four years ago for that matter. My goodness, I missed them. But tapping that on and I'm just draping it around. Here is where I have oily skin. So that's why I like my Milk Hydro Grip. It's really great, but I'm oily. And with creams, they have that nice natural, look at how nice and dewy it is. So nice. But because I'm oily, I border on dewy or greasy. So I keep two vanilla dust. You don't have to do that. I just do this. What I, my palette is not your palette. Okay, let's make you a palette that you are happy with. You don't have, there's so many different sizes of palettes. Like you don't have, to go big. I mean, I like going big. Anyway, we are going to go into vanilla dust. I'm going to use this fluffy brush and I'm doing this now because I don't want it to compromise my blush. More makes texture, but we want to make sure our discoloration stays where it is. So we want to set it, put it on your brush and we are going to start on the out perimeters of our face right here and then bring it in. Okay. If you put your blush on first, okay, I have it on perimeter of the face. I start at my temple and then I bring it in. When you think it's empty, it's not. And I want you to remember that anytime you've ever played with glitter, it's not empty. Put black on here. It's never gone. So keep that in mind. Even when you think it's not there, it's in there. And so that's when, when I think it's empty, I go down the middle because this is a high texture area for me. This is a high texture area right here. I have large pores, so I don't like to apply direct powder to those areas. So when I think it's empty, I go in. Plus it would lighten my blush and I don't want to do that. So going into blush, I'm going to use Madrid. It's been my favorite to go with my bronzer using the blush and bronzer brush. I'm going to tap into Madrid. It's a nice pinky peach tone and I'm going to smile because then I can see all my cheek. And I'm going to start at the top because I'm maturing. I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to go up and down and then come down. Up and down and then come down. Just like that. Isn't that pretty? Super pretty. I brought it down a little too low there, so I'm going to fix that in a minute. So starting at the top and then come down. Up and then come down. Now, if you have hyperpigmentation, using bright colors may not work for you. I cannot use Renaissance. Now, granted, that's not available anymore, but if you have it, this color doesn't work for me. It grabs my hyperpigmentation and it grabs my scarring. So I'm gonna blend this down. I'm gonna take my main highlight on the small end. I'm gonna grab some because I brought this down just a little too low and I'm just gonna clean it up. I love listening to them play. It's so interesting. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to spounce it and just blend it down and it cleans it right up. Super easy, very forgivable. If you feel like you've over applied anywhere, this, this, this fluffy end right here is your best friend. This is what you do to tap over and blend everything down where you think you've over applied. All right, we're going to put in some brightening highlight under my eyes. I'm going to use a small end of my detail brush. I'm going to tap in like I'm scared of it. This one didn't hurt my feelings. This one I'm scared of, so I'm going to tap it. And you're going to put a little on the brush. I like, because I'm maturing and we all have, texture is texture. You can't do anything about it. But I can camouflage it by bringing it down right here. And I like to enhance the apples of my cheeks by adding a little brightening. Brightening pulls out where shadowing pulls in. So then I'm going to start here on the top of my apple. And then I'm going to bring it up to my inner corner here. And then I'm going to tap this under the eye. Now with this, this is a soft tissue area. Less is more. Fix that. Play with it. Anything worth doing is worth doing well. And sometimes it takes a little extra work, especially with under eyes. I'm just, I'm living on my orbital bone. And I'm going to pull up right here, coming down on that orbital bone. And then I'm going to blend what's left and pull what I've put on up onto that soft tissue. You can texturize anything. And I have stuff. 
And so I want very little on that soft tissue part because that's where all my texture really likes to live for me. And so I put very little, less is more, but you're using a color that's 80% pigmentation and it's too light for your skin. And it just livens things up and it looks beautiful, but you don't need a lot. It's already got color, a light color, and it's already got a lot of pigment. So you don't need a lot to get a really good look. It does, more doesn't mean better does <laughs> so again tapping like it hurt my feelings and I'm scared boom 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 wait that was contour it was hurt my feelings I'm mad right now I'm scared <laughs> starting on that apple bringing it up onto that inner corner right there tapping on again and then I'm gonna go right here that's how I do it. I always start right here then I get that orbital bone out here then I tap it down and then I bring it up Okay, there we go. Boom, that's it. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna fluff it, and I'm just gonna bridge my blush to my brightening. All right, I'm gonna grab the big end. I'm gonna go a little bit into my contour. I'm gonna go right here. I'm creating a shadow under my lip because I want bigger lips, but I don't want to stick anything in them. So I use contour to create the illusion of a shadow and I put that right on my Cupid's bow, not all the way around. I'm not looking to look like a blowfish. I'm just looking to look like I've got a little cute pout. Taking a little brightener, and I'm gonna create a contrasting color on the outside, pulling it down outside of that contour. I just explain the heck out of everything I do. Really, I just get into super teachy mode, and I'm sorry. All right, we're gonna go in, and I'm gonna use two colors. I used this last night and I loved this combination. That is not the brush I want, this is. This is the Multitasker. I'm gonna go into Renaissance. So if you like a nice dark color, Renaissance was really one of my favorites, but the dupe is MAC Half Red. MAC Half Red, you can get it at Nordstrom. I heard there's a sale, I don't know, but there's no mirror right there. But MAC Half Red is a dupe to Renaissance. And I'm just gonna line as close to the edge without popping off and I'm just gonna outline it. It's dark but it creates this really beautiful lip color. Oh I love it so much when you put something light with it. So I'm just gonna line here and here. Okay and then I'm gonna take carousel this is a gloss, you could tell because it has a sheen to it and it has some flex in it and it turns it frosty and it's so pretty with Renaissance. And I'm just gonna put that on the inside and then I'm gonna mix it in with that Renaissance lip liner so I don't have that 1994 deep outer line. I'm mixing them together. And they were, look at how pretty that is, right? And then it's glossy, it's shiny, it's frosty. It's frosty, not in a trashy way. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, here we go. It takes me forever to do my lips, I'm sorry. Okay, that's it. All right, I've put my powder on. I'm gonna take my Urban Decay D-Slick because again, I'm oily. If you have dry combination skin, Saints is so good, but I'm not combination or dry. I am oily, so there we go. All right, that's it. I'm gonna take my fluffy brush and I'm just gonna press in my setting cup, my setting spray. Get it all smashed in and out. Okay, that's it. That's how you apply your makeup over a correcting color. Look at that. That's nice. That's nice. So message me. Let's get you a palette that works for you, that you like, you know you want to. Have a great day.